Hi, it's your boy Megalon Jones here for another episode of Combat Mission. This time for the sharp end of the stick, we have the Fortress Italy module in which we find ourselves as the Canadian Army in November 1944 advancing along the Adriatic coast in northern Italy. We've had a month of really soggy weather so the ground is muddy and our mission is to advance forward and clear a line or follow on forces to continue the advance towards the city of Ravenna. We've been given two platoons that are backed up by scouts from the battalion alongside four tank destroyers. There are no off-map assets available as those are being saved for further action in the morning. Alongside that, we've got some bits of gear which give the scenario its title. Uh, we've been given a number of converted Bren gun carriers which have been modified to carry flamethrowers. Uh, the flame tracks are going to back up the infantry and uh, should give us something unique to look at. Something I really haven't um, dealt with a whole lot is flamethrowers in combat mission. Another interesting facet of the scenario is that there's no stated objectives. I'm supposed to spot German units, clear out these farmhouses, which you see in the green, and keep my casualties to a minimum while maximizing enemy casualties. So it's sort of a sandbox in how I want to take care of this, but I've developed a procedure. It's going to be a very conservative movement. Uh, both platoons on the left and right are going to be moving forward relatively uh, cautiously, and I'm going to enact a procedure that you'll see unfold as the mission uh, continues. Both number nine and number 10 platoon come up to their first uh, farmhouses without any contact. Considering all the mud, one of the big concerns is making sure the leg infantry does not outpace its mechanized support. Another thing I have to keep in mind is that both number 9 and number 10 platoons are relatively green, while the supporting forces, the scout forces, the flame tracks, the tank destroyers, these guys are all veterans and have seen combat before. I have to treat number 9 and number 10 platoon pretty gingerly. The procedure I come up with is to send up a base of fire with the infantry, send for, forth uh, two-man scout teams, back up the infantry with tank destroyers, and always have a flame track nearby. And the other thing is to uh, pepper each farmhouse with a liberal amount of small arms to try to provoke a response from Germans nearby, whether in the farmhouse or an adjacent farmhouse or in the field. Um, the low lighting visibility doesn't really help anybody here, so I'm kind of trying to wave a flag at our pixel cherries to uh, maybe start shooting at me.
While we don't have any contact with German forces, we do find evidence that they were there and we're finding foxholes, former infantry positions that have been abandoned. Okay, I think we're about 20 minutes into the scenario and we are pretty much halfway up the map without any type of contact. Now, I basically decide to just continue along with this uh, route of action, basically moving along a broad front, uh, scouts forward, everyone else more or less taking their time and keeping an eye on the countryside. Finally, number nine platoon makes contact with German pickets and they are dispatched quickly, which allows me to bring up the next part of my procedure, which is to hose everything down with napalm. And we get some very satisfying shrieks of horror and pain indicating that we are in fact cooking our pixel jerrys. At the same time, on the right flank, we make contact with more substantial German forces. But we are pretty much point blank with an entire infantry platoon, a pair of tank destroyers, and a couple of the uh, Wasp Ronson flame tracks. We then go into an infantry style assault and I only manage a couple of friendly casualties in this. Uh, a German does end up throwing a hand grenade. And here's my first casualties of the map right here. Or there we go. Yeah. But that ends up being the template for the remainder of the actions. We're, we're going to move very slowly. Farmhouse to farmhouse. See if we can make contact. Pin down the enemy. Uh, and then torch them with uh, the flamethrowers. On the left flank with number 9 platoon, there is a couple worrying turns as the platoon is caught in the open in one of these muddy fields by a fairly uh, substantial German force, including MGs. But we are able to uh, bring forward more firepower to silence these guys and then begin to drop uh, smoke from the 2-inch mortars in order to uh, mass continued movement forward by number nine platoon um, i can't stress how much i love using smoke in combat mission um, it's it's just absolutely vital especially if you're out in the open like this And rather than retreat, I used the smoke to uh, help out further maneuver forward, which basically the goal is to uh, get close enough where I can, I can bring forward the flame tracks. On the left flank, we also have a bit of a setback when an M10 Wolverine rolls over a mine Everybody's okay. 
the tracks are damaged and it isn't able to move but it is still in firing shape and isn't able to uh, use its main gun to help cover the advance of 9 platoon. There really isn't a whole lot of fancy maneuvering. Um, it's just pretty much basic fire and maneuver, which is, and this is all very linear. Um, we use the Bren gun carriers and the Bren machine guns uh, to suppress the German infantry, assault with infantry, dismounts, and uh, bring forward the flames. On the right, a Panzer Shrek takes out one of my Bren carriers, but he doesn't live to launch another rocket as he's immediately spotted and dispatched. It takes a good 10 or 15 minutes worth of fighting to break the Germans along this line. Uh, but it eventually happens. We suffer some casualties, nothing catastrophic, but the Germans, or at least the ones I can see because of the darkness, are pretty much in full-on retreat. And those that don't retreat get cooked by the Ronsons. This whole scenario is basically um, a lot of small unit ambushes on part by the Germans and learning how to counter that without losing too much momentum or, or having too many casualties. Uh, you can pretty much expect to lose a few guys at first, but then if you do the right thing, build up firepower superiority, you pretty much extinguish uh, any of the problems going forward. The trouble is is that both number 9 and number 10 platoon are green and they're starting to waver about three quarters of the way down the map which gets into my thinking. The other problem is I've just found that there are in fact more mines as I now lose my second M10. That guy is a full-on KO. The crew's dead. Or no, the M10 is finished and uh, the crew bails out. Okay, we're a little past 8 o'clock in the morning. The sun should be coming up anytime now, which means I need to get into end game stage because I don't want to be caught out in the open while the sun's up. Uh, number, I have number 9 platoon on the left. They are going to create a firing line against the remaining German uh, farmhouses and we're going to maneuver with the scout platoon which is yet to be engaged and these guys are crack troops. Backed up by number 10 platoon to go with a right hook and just finish it off. And everything starts off real quiet. The Bren carriers, as long as you move them slowly, have no problem with the mud. It's on on the left with number 9 platoon that I got to start rethinking my plan as the Germans start to drop uh, spotting artillery rounds. So they can't really stay there as a base of fire. They got to move forward. Um, as it just so happens, number 9 platoon has suffered the most casualties, so they're a little bit fragile. Now when the art artillery does fall, uh, we're mostly out of the killing field, which is good, with the exception of this Achilles tank destroyer. Um, every once in a while you get something like this happen to you in combat mission with open top vehicles. Yeah, they're all dead. Uh, that's that's a, a mortar or an artillery round that went into the open top. So 
So if you're keeping track at home, three out of four tank destroyers have either been destroyed or knocked out. But I still got plenty of uh, juice left in the uh, wasp flamethrowers. And the Germans are pretty much subdued at this point. They aren't able to offer any type of resistance. The Germans really don't have what it takes to stop this uh, as long as you play it pretty conservatively and uh, maintain the principles of fire superiority and at the end the AI uh, gives up the ghost. They end up surrendering. And with plenty of time left uh, that's a Canadian major victory, so hooray for the Pixel Loonies. Uh, we suffered 20 dead, and the Germans have uh, 48 dead. They also got about 14 men okay, although I can't find them on the map, which to me indicates that the scenario designer had a... Uh, what am I trying to say? Like uh, a withdrawal condition for the Germans in, in which they could get them to the map edge and withdraw them. Uh, so that's that's the only Germans left on the map right there. Uh, the majority of the killing had to be done by the Wasp flame throwers, which was the absolute star of the show. Uh, number 9 and number 10 platoon have both had their baptism of fire, so the survivors get to call themselves veterans now. Um, I like this. It's a little bit different um, in that there's no... Uh, it's very open as far as to how you could play it or go against it. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do next, but coming up, they've got, uh, I found something really special that I think you'll enjoy. If you liked the uh, coming attractions from last month's skit, you're probably going to like this little bit of musical number that I found uh, that goes along with the film Green Slime. Till next time. Pour it on, Morris. Give it everything she's got. Open the door, you'll find the secret. To find the answer is to keep it. 